Thanks for checking out this movie review video. So this is for the 1972 Giallo-ish movie, Shadows Unseen. It's available on the Giallo Realms, uh, or Giallo Realm YouTube channel, which is where I'm watching a lot of my Giallo and Giallo-ish films and doing reviews on them. So you can check them out there and then come and watch my review because spoilers, always spoilers for these. So this one, I will say overall, pretty good. I, I enjoyed this a decent amount. Uh, it wasn't one that I was like, it's amazing. It wasn't one where I'm like, it sucks. It's kind of in the middle-ish, a little bit better than in the middle because I do think that the mystery that's kind of presented and the the rate at which they give you like little crumbs of the mystery is pretty solid. Pretty solid in my opinion. Would have liked some better death scenes, some more blood to it, some good, you know, giallo type, one killer black glove type thing, but... You know, that's why I say giallo-ish. Sorry, I've got a lot of uh, congestion, so I'll be breathing through my mouth and not my nose on this one. Allergies, yay. Directed by Camillo Bazzoni, who also directed I Live for Your Death, Suicide Commandos, and Black Lemons. That's an interesting title right there, Black Lemons. Makes you wonder what that's about. Written by Enzo D'Ambrosio, who also wrote the script Emmanuel on Taboo Island, which I think is like a softcore type film, I'm, I think. Never seen any of those, but there's a whole line of those titles. Also written by Massimo Felisati, who has written scripts for The Weekend Murders, The Night Evelyn Came Out of the Grave, which I also have a review for on my channel. Strip Nude for Your Killer, which I also have a review for on my channel, and Violence for Kicks, which is a cool title. And Fabio Pitoru, who wrote scripts for The Weekend Murders, The Red Queen Kills Seven Times, which I also have a review for on my channel, The Night Evelyn Came Out of the Grave, Nine Guests for a Crime, and Macho Killers. <laughs> There's another great title. So the blurred lights during the intro credits is actually kind of cool to watch. Obviously, it looks like it's kind of a situation where they, like, shot cars and street lights at night, and then they kind of, like, blurred it. Um, a lot of the times with these films that are, like, that are from this time period that are Italian, a lot, you know, giallo and giallo-ish, will have something going on or some sort of freeze frame on something during the intro credits. And a lot of the times it's super boring, so the fact that it was kind of, like, changing and having some interesting colored lights and that was an a welcomed change from what i'm used to getting like there was one film i forget which one it was that i reviewed where literally it was just like a freeze frame on the front of a car for the entire time that they're rolling the intro credits and that is boring so i'm glad they did something with this one uh the payment for the ruby ring and the subsequent trip to the park definitely piques the interest of the viewer uh you kind of wonder, like, where is this film headed? Because obviously there's something kind of shady going on with Enrico going and paying to get this ruby ring back. Uh, and then also, right after that, he goes with, uh, what is her name? Rose Rosita to, like, this secluded place. It's basically, like, a dark park. And then there's, like, a building near there, which I think was, like, a brothel is what they come to the realization of in the end. And... It's just very mysterious. It's a great setup because it presents a lot of questions that you then want answered as a viewer of a film. So great setup, uh, okay ending to it, and good mystery along the way. So it's pretty solid. Certainly nothing suspicious about a woman having you drive to a dark remote place and then having you get out of the car and walk into a dark alley. Uh, you would think maybe Enrico would think that something was amiss here unless he super trusted Rosita, which I think maybe he did. But the fact that like he gets in his car and it seemed like he was kind of surprised that she was there was your first indicator that something's off and weird. Then she has him go to this kind of secluded place that's dark. Then she gets him get out of the car, has him get out of the car and go into a dark alley by himself and you know, as the viewer, nothing good is going to happen here for Enrico. Nothing. And then that's when he gets jumped by all these dudes, beaten to crap, and then murdered. Which they do question, the police officers, when they're checking out the crime scene, are then questioning, why did he get beaten before he was killed? And it really makes you think at that point that it's kind of like a personal touch to the killing. It's like, we want to beat the crap out of this guy first, make him suffer, and then we'll grant him death. So... And that was a question that, 
oh, who was it? Like the chief of police, I believe, had had. The talk about Michelli makes it sound like he's some sort of loose cannon. Uh, a lot of talk around that table initially with the people who were involved in the investigation saying, let's bring in Michelli. I think it was the, the police chief who was the one who was like, I want to bring in Michelli. And the others are basically like, oh, no, we can't do Michelli. His attitude, you know, they talk about how he would like beaten someone he was investigating or interrogating as well. And, yeah, it just sounds like he's this loose cannon type where you're expecting once he shows up, things are going to get kind of crazy and very unorthodox from the standpoint of doing an actual investigation. So, uh, yeah. A bit of extra intrigue when the phone tip about the Luger gun with the long barrel on the boat turns out to end up being true. That's the call that Michelle ends up getting as soon as he's on the case. Uh, the questions are like, who is this tipster? Are they trying to throw Michelle off of the real scent? Or is there something else going on? Is this like a legitimate tipster? And I had the feeling that it was someone trying to guide the investigation from the get-go. And in the end, it ends up being exactly that, where they were trying to set up, um, uh, what's his name, DeLogo, the guy who was on the boat with the gun. They're trying to set him up to go down for it. But he, I think it turns out in the end that he actually was involved and he actually was the one who murdered Enrico. It's just there were a lot of other people involved and the whole motivation behind it and everything, the, the drug smuggling. Um, they just didn't want that to come out. So they were like, look, here is the actual killer. Take him in, put him in jail, and we'll be done with it. And then obviously we find find out towards the end that it's actually the police chief and some of these other individuals in the police office, office, police precinct, that are involved in this because they're part of that club, that gambling club that's basically a front for a drug smuggling ring. And that's obviously what Enrico, as a journalist, was looking into, even though his editor-in-chief states all the time that he doesn't know what he was working on. Actually, everyone states that they didn't know what he was working on. So it is kind of weird because it's like, was that true? Like, did they actually not know? Was he actually keeping them in the dark? Or did they understand what happened to him and they were kind of like we don't want someone coming after us so we're just going to be like that's a thing that happened we're not involved nobody try and kill us hard to know what delogo says about how he ended up killing enrico doesn't really jibe with what the viewer ended up seeing in the beginning during the actual scene where he's murdered so as the viewer, you know there's definitely something else going on here. You know, you even do bring into question whether DeLogo was involved or not. But having seen what you saw, you're like, there were so many people involved. Like, he was getting beaten by multiple guys, and then he was killed. So obviously, he's you know, DeLogo's not telling the entire story here. So what's going on? Like, why is he trying to take the rap for this? Like, it seems very off. And as a viewer, you know that there's more to the story. Although your question is, is Michelli going to figure it out? You assume probably will. The mention of Rosaria by the... Oh, I said Rosita. Sorry, that was wrong. Rosaria. The mention of Rosaria by the fish peddler strikes a moment of recognition for the viewer because you had heard Rosaria's name before. I believe Enrico had said her name before. So you do immediately you know, connect her back to the actual murder situation. You're really like, when this fish peddler tells him this, you're like, ah, now we're going to start getting somewhere. And you do. Although, she ends up dead. So, yeah. Which, by the way, when she's found dead, I really like the POV shot of Michelle, like Michelle's POV, like going through the house and then going upstairs and finally finding her dead. I like the way they did that. That looked pretty good. There are many moments during the interrogation of Giorgio that you think Michelli will do something harsh, mainly because it was said earlier that he's kind of a loose cannon and he'd actually done something physically to someone he was interrogating before. They also do a good job of making it appear, as does Michelli as a character, appear like he's going to be enacting some sort of violence on Giorgio at some point. Obviously, that's a tactic to get him to talk, and he actually never ends up doing anything to him, so effective but you're kind of i mean i was kind of surprised that he didn't i thought he was definitely going to based off what had been said about him rosaria found dead seems the real perpetrator is trying to clean up after themselves yes they're leaving a trail of bodies because they don't want the main motivation at the end to end up being found 
So when you found Rosaria, I think they said that it was a mix of cyanide and heroin that killed her because she was addicted to drugs. Um, so obviously you know that, you know, she did not inject that. You know, she wasn't killing herself with that. Um, so you're like, yes, who's really involved is trying to cover their tracks. They do make the newspaper editor seem quite suspicious since he keeps trying to steer the investigation. He also acts like it's no big deal. So like I said earlier that I don't know whether he he did know what he was investigating or not. He claims that he doesn't. And, and it could be the case that he knew, but he was just like, I'm not trying to get killed, get involved. But the fact that he continually acts like I don't, like, he doesn't really care. Like, his reaction is not appropriate for someone who worked for you and knows you, um, you know, ending up dead. He's just kind of like, oh, yeah. And then he continually seems like he tries to steer the investigation saying, well, I think it was a suicide. Or no, he says it was a robbery. I think, yeah, I think it was a robbery gone wrong, basically. He says it multiple times. So he ends up looking suspicious for that reason. I have to say right now, my apologies. Friggin' dogs in the neighborhood barking again. Uh, I just, living in a townhouse, it's so hard. And it seems like all of a sudden the dogs are barking a lot more lately. I don't appreciate it. It took 46 minutes to get to a sex scene. That's kind of surprising. And it's actually a very random sex scene. It's the only sex scene that ends up showing up in the film. And it seems so weird and forced because it's Michele being just randomly approached by Simona. I believe that's her name, Simona. And her just being like, hey, I'm interested, want to get it on? He's like, yep. And then there's this, like, a pretty quick clip of them getting it on. And then they're just like, there you go. You got your sex scene. Let's keep moving. And it's just like, that's weird. But, like, with a film like this, you expect that there's going to be a sex scene. You expect that there's going to be more. And they're going to, going to be a little more, you know, showing a little bit more than this one does. So I was very surprised with the... With the fact that there was just one sex scene and it was so brief and not as graphic as they normally are. So I was just like, oh, okay. Simona seems too suspicious because she throws herself at Michele and then is like, I can help you, basically. She's the one who steers him towards going to that gambling uh, place, uh, gambling club that's the front for the, the, uh, the drug ring. And then that's when he starts, you know, seeing what's going on there and everything, but... It's just weird. Like, her character just seems, like, shoved in there. Like, she just comes out of nowhere. She's got no connection to anyone. And then she's just like, oh, um, I like you. Let's bang. Oh, by the way, you're working on an investigation? I can help you with that. It's just like a convenience of writing type thing with the script. So not great. When Michelli meets with the Interpol agent, you gotta love the diatribe that Michelli goes on about having a bad stomach because he's cooking for himself since he doesn't have a wife anymore. And then uh, also talking about how he and his wife speak, or ex-wife, speak more now since the divorce. Uh, it's just like this weird moment where he kind of like, just like goes off and is just like complaining about his personal problems when he's there to talk about this case with someone who has information for him. So it's just, it's kind of like a weird side, side thing and you're just like, okay. But it is a little funny and quirky and adds a little extra to the character of Michele as here's a little bit about his personal life, which honestly, like, I don't think all the stuff with his ex-wife and his kid matter in the film, except maybe just to endear him more to the viewer to be like, look, there's stuff at stake. You know, he has a kid, so if anything happens to him, which obviously it does in the end, like, it's more tragic for that reason because he's leaving people behind. So, yeah. But other than that, it didn't do much. You can tell Michele is setting a trap when he tells Simona about the impending raid when they're at that restaurant. Uh, then later he ends up listening to the recording of her call and tracing the number she ends up calling. Because then you find out, obviously, she's not necessarily in full cahoots with the people running the gambling club, but she knows them well and doesn't want them to get caught for some reason. So maybe she's getting paid somehow. I don't know. Uh, and it's possible that she was being thrown, like she was throwing herself at Michele because she then was trying to kind of gather information for the people who were involved in Enrico's murder in order to kind of feed them information and let them know, okay, this is where he is in his investigation and you need to be worried or don't be worried. Or like in this instance, give the tip off. This place is going to be raided, you know, do something. So yeah, so. Uh, but then it's cool to see that 
you know, Michelli's kind of one step ahead of her and kind of assumes that she's going to tip him off because he does the, the tracing of the phone call and everything. Delo tells Michelli everything was teed up for him and he was just supposed to take the easy road to solve the case. Yeah, so that was an interesting kind of reveal of, oh, what's really going on here? Because it did seem like they kind of were really like, just, you know, get the logo. Oh, you got the guy, you got your tip, you got the logo, it's all solved, we're done with it. And then they get pissed off when he ends up getting the logo released. And then even more pissed off when it's, I, I think it is Rosenthal he gets pulled in, who is from the gambling club. And they get him thrown in jail. And then it's the police chief that gets Rosenthal out. So you're like, this is suspicious. And that's when you kind of realize when Delo's kind of telling him everything, like, we we teed this up for you. Like, we, we led you there. We gave you everything. You sh needed to just let it be. You know, do what you're supposed to do and let it be. It does seem like an odd moment when Michelli says he'll just resign to make things easier for the police chief. It seems very out of character for him because he was so animate about actually solving this case and doing the right thing. Uh, but you do get the feeling that he's not exactly done with it. Like you, you, I got the feeling that he was just saying that to the police chief and then he was going to go and take care of this himself, basically. Which maybe he was going to, but then that's when we get into the whole car chase thing where obviously he's marked for death. Like they're coming after him at this point. They're not even going to take the chance of him just walking away from it like he said he was going to to the police chief. They're just going to ax him because obviously you know they took care of Enrico who had figured out what was going on and he was just a reporter so they're down to take out anyone is what it seems like I thought Simona would be saved somehow uh before getting stabbed but no they were literally just like mm, stabbed in the gut she's gonna die now they don't show her actually die so maybe she lived I don't know but they didn't follow up on it so I assume that that was kind of like the end of it the car chase scene was pretty solid. I did like that. It was pretty well pulled off. It felt pretty intense. It was interesting. You know, it went long enough that you were fully engaged in it. Uh, and then how it went in the end, I was kind of like, I don't know. This isn't what we're going to do, is it? Where the, the bad guys crash their car and then it looked like maybe they were dead just from the crash. I was going to be like, lame. But then the one guy like kicks the door open and they start the fist fight, which... I did really like the end to that fist fight. It was very weird uh, where, like, Michele ends up punching him, and he, it, I guess he punches him with so much force that he goes flying backwards, whacks his head on this big rock, and that kills him. And it's just like, that's a forceful punch. It's ridiculous. It's over the top. But, hey, it's, like, funny and fun. And it's better than just having those two guys die just from the impact of the car crash. One of them did, but I was hoping there'd still be a little something after that, and there was. Now, that is an ending. Michele falling down and dying in the blood-splattered phone booth. The way they shot it, the way they set that up, the way you... Well, I mean, I didn't expect it. I was going to say, you don't expect it. I don't know, maybe you did. I did not expect it. I thought... Because with a lot of these, in the end, the person in Michele's situation, the hero of the film does just live happily ever after basically but in this one he just gets gunned down and it's kind of shocking i didn't see it coming and it just the way they shot it looked so good so interesting it had even more impact so it, because it's like the slow motion of him like you know letting go of the phone and like falling back and slumping down in this blood stain or blood splattered phone booth where you can see some of the bullet holes it's a, it's a good ending. I, I was pleasantly surprised with that. Lots of interesting smooth camera movements in this as well. So from a directorial standpoint and cinematography standpoint, it was pretty well handled. Uh, acting was good, all that jazz. Uh, pretty solid film. So out of five stars with half stars in play, I'm going to give it three stars. I, I thought about three and a half, but I don't, I don't think it's quite there. But yeah, because it did kind of have a little bit of pacing issues as well. And... Yeah, three stars, but I considered three and a half, so just know that. So, yeah. Anyway, I would love to hear your opinions on this if you've seen this film. Go ahead and put it down in the comments. Also, if you just want to talk about Italian cinema from this time period or Giallo films or Giallo-esque films or whatever, go ahead and feel free to talk. Do me a quick favor, though. Hit subscribe if you haven't for my channel yet. 
I really do appreciate it. It is literally the best way to pay me back for this free content um, because I'm not, at this point when I'm uh, recording this, I'm not making any sort of money or anything. So uh, motivation, you know, getting, motivation is a key thing. So getting new subscribers definitely keeps me motivated. It lets me see that person and say, I'm very grateful for this because that's someone who's indicating to me that they appreciate what I'm putting out there and they at least watched some of it so it meant something to them so i do appreciate that uh also hit the notification bell button if you can and you can it's pretty quick and easy i'm putting out that way you know that when i'm putting out new videos and i'm doing four a week sometimes sometimes rarely less sometimes more but anyway thank you very much for taking your time to watch this video and until next time keep it brutal